Hey, what's up guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar here. Here in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the Phrygian mode. So, uh, the Phrygian mode is one of the seven modes of the major scale, and it is the darkest of the seven modes. So, if you want to... Major generally sounds happy, minor generally sounds sad. Those are the two most familiar um, tonalities that you're probably used to hearing if you listen to songs on the radio and stuff. Phrygian is darker than minor, all right? So if you want to get darker, if you want to get sadder, if you want to get creepier, Phrygian mode is the mode to use, okay? So in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at, um, you know, where the Phrygian mode comes from. We're going to be looking at it in terms of relative and parallel modes. If you don't know what that means, I'll be explaining that in this lesson. Um, we're going to be taking a look at some song examples. We're going to be taking a look at uh, how you might go about composing a song or a bass line. And then we're also going to look at how the Phrygian mode combines with the harmonic minor scale to create what is known as the Phrygian dominant scale. One last thing uh, I wanted to say about this is if you're a full access member of my website, uh, this lesson will be including like four or five video backing tracks for you to practice soloing up and down the fretboard using the Phrygian mode and combining it with the harmonic minor scale. So that's for full access members. If you want more information on that, links to that will also be low. With all that said, let's get started. All right, so let's start this lesson off by uh, taking a look at the, the uh, idea of a tonality. So basically, when I say tonality, I just mean that we're choosing one of the diatonic chords within a key and making that to be the home chord or the tonal center. So if you take the key of C major, for example, so these are the three major and three minor chords found in the key of C major. If you want to make your tonality to be a major tonality or the Ionian tonality, you would just choose your chord, your uh, focus point to be the C major chord. So you can make a chord progression like... All right, starting and ending on C. It's a major, it's C major. It's in the Ionian mode. It has that happy type of tonality. If you wanted to, you know, uh, write a chord progression starting and ending on the A minor, then the uh, result would be a minor tonality, or the Aeolian mode. Okay, so it's a little sadder Aeolian mode. So those are the most common ones, but you have the other chords that you could also make to be your uh, tonalities as well. So... For the Phrygian mode, it's always going to be the three chord. So anytime you make the three chord within a set of diatonic chords to be your tonal center, the result is the Phrygian mode. On the circle of fifths in your grouping of six, the uh, three chord can always be found on the inner circle uh, in the clockwise position. Okay, so uh, one common so uh, song example of this would be uh, Space Oddity by David Bowie. So that song actually starts out on an F major chord, or an F major 7 chord. And then it goes to an E minor chord. So it's got that really sad beginning. So it's even, even sadder than if you were to try and write within this key, within this six chords, 
if you were to try to write something in A minor, it's just not going to be as sad as the E minor chord. It's something about this three chord, something about this Phrygian mode. It's just super, super sad, super dark. So even after the um, the lyrics kick in in uh, Space Oddity. So it still keeps going back to that E minor chord, making that the tonal center. So this is like a good example of like, like making use of Phrygian within the context of these chords. You see a minor chord, and then you see a major chord that is one half step higher. So, which is exactly what I just showed you, E minor to F major, E minor. One half step higher major chord, F major. That's that's the characteristic chord combination of the Phrygian mode. So when you see a minor chord followed by a major chord that is one half step higher, it's a very good indication that Phrygian mode is going to be the mode that you're going to use. All right. So now let's take a look at the uh, you know the actual scale patterns. Okay. So let's take a look at the scale patterns for the Phrygian mode. So we're going to be looking at it in both terms of uh, relative modes and parallel modes. All right, so what I mean by relative is it shares the same notes as a particular parent major scale. Therefore, that if you wanted to play in a particular mode other than the major scale, you can always think in terms of those patterns. All right, so and then parallel modes means that it shares the same root as another scale. So you can look at it in terms of intervals and the, how one scale differs from another mode or scale by changing certain intervals. We're going to look at both of them now. So let's start out by looking in uh, relative. So uh, when we look at relative modes, you want to uh, be able to determine what is known as the parent major scale. So that's something that people are uh, often confused by, but it's very, very simple to do. You just have to understand that uh, each of the seven modes has a number assigned to it. So Ionian would be one, um, Dorian's two, Phrygian three, Lydian four, Mixolydian five, Aeolian six, Locrian seven. So Phrygian is three. That's the one we're looking at for this lesson. We're looking at the E Phrygian mode for this lesson. Okay, so E Phrygian. E is the third of something. Okay, since Phrygian's three, E would be the third of something. That something is your parent major scale. So E is the third of what? E is the third of C. So C is going to be your parent major scale for the E Phrygian mode. All right. So as long as you understand your, you know, those each of the seven modes and you know what their number is assigned to them and then you kind of do some backwards thinking think okay I know what mode I'm in it's the third of something what is that something that's your parent major scale all right so let's uh, do this all this stuff up here in the 12th to 15th area because that's where your E minor pentatonic position number one is okay so Let's start out by looking at the C major scale up in that area. So if you started and ended on the note C and then played the notes of the C major scale, you would have this. All right, so that's your C major scale. If you wanted to play the A minor scale in that area, you could just as easily do that by starting on the A and ending on the A because A is one of the um, relative modes of C major as well. So. Okay, so that's A minor in that area. So if you wanted to play the E Phrygian mode, you would use those same notes. That's your scalar framework, but you would just start on the E and end on the E. So let's do that. So starting on the E. I see how it sounds a little creepier there. If you wanted to uh, move that and play through two octaves until you get to the next E. So that's the E Phrygian mode. We're just using the same notes as the C major scale, which is also the same notes as the A minor scale. You're just your tonal center, your home note, your focal point of the scale is the note E, which is why it's the E Phrygian mode. All right, so that's looking at it in terms of relative. Let's now look at it in terms of parallel. 
Okay, so that was looking at it in terms of relative modes. Now let's take a look at it in terms of parallel modes. Okay, so parallel just means it shares the same root as another nearby, probably more familiar scale. So um, the Phrygian mode, E Phrygian, that's the mode we're looking at, uh, it's very closely related to the E natural minor scale. So the E natural minor scale has a scale formula of 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 6, flat 7. E natural minor played up in this area, 12th to 15th region would look like this. So that's the E natural minor scale with that scale formula. The only difference between the uh, E natural minor scale and the F E Phrygian mode is just one note. Phrygian just simply has a flat two. So if you can find your second scale degree um, within any E minor scale patterns and you just flatten that second scale degree, the result is going to be the same thing. It's going to be the E Phrygian mode. So within this pattern that you see here, your second degree is found here. Uh, you also have a second here. You also have a second here. So if you just lower that by one half step, the result is going to be the same thing. We just took a parallel approach to determining the exact same thing. So, all right. So minor, Phrygian. All right. So it's only one note difference. Okay, from the natural minor scale. So if you can, if you're soloing up and down the fretboard uh, within the E natural minor scale playing in the key of E minor and you want to switch to the Phrygian mode as long as you're aware of where that second degree interval is and you just lower that by one half step creating that flat two the result is going to be the same thing it's the E Phrygian mode so whether you want to determine this or think of this in terms of parallel think of this in terms of relative it doesn't matter all right the, whatever it takes to get you to understand how to play up and down the fretboard within the E Phrygian mode if you have to think okay it shares scale patterns of C major if that's what works for you that's fine just be aware of where your note E is within those scale patterns if you want to think in terms of okay E natural minor but I have to flat the second scale degree to get the E Phrygian mode if that's what works for you to get you to fluently play in the scale that's fine too parallel approach relative approach both perfectly legit just two different ways to basically accomplish the same thing. Okay, so another cool thing about this Phrygian mode is that it combines really well with the harmonic minor scale. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the harmonic minor scale and where it comes from and all that stuff, take a look at uh, the other lessons that I linked to you to below, and uh, you can dive deeper into that subject. But in short, just know that the harmonic minor scale is the same exact thing as the natural minor scale, but with a raised seventh degree. So let's look up here in our, you know, twelfth to fifteenth region again. Let's look at our A or er, the A minor scale, A natural minor scale up in this area. So starting on the white dot, ending on the white dot. If you wanted to play across all six strings, you could do that too. your A natural minor scale. If you just find your seventh scale degree and you raise that by one half step, the result is going to be the harmonic minor scale. So let's find our seventh scale degree, starting on the A, counting up seven, one. So that's your seventh scale degree. You also have that same note found up here. You also have that same note found down here. So anytime you have that seventh scale degree note, just raise it by one half step. The result is the harmonic minor scale. So what you see here is your A harmonic minor scale. So if you wanted to, instead of making the A to be your root note or your tonal center, and if you wanted to instead make it the E, you could do that, and then the result is going to be what is known as the Phrygian dominant scale. So you're just playing the same scale pattern, but it's you're just focusing on the note E within that pattern. So,
So the harmonic minor scale already has kind of an exotic sound as it is. But then when you further uh, take that scale pattern and then make the E within that pattern to be your tonal center instead of the A, it gets even more exotic sounding. It gets even more darker sounding. It gets more creepy sounding, okay? So these two uh, scales, just the Phrygian mode by itself or this, you know, Phrygian mode, Phrygian dominant scale, harmonic mind, all this stuff, it all kind of combines together really nicely, okay? The thing you just want to understand is just understand these scale patterns okay you're probably already familiar with the natural minor scale you may be familiar with the harmonic minor scale take those two scale patterns that you're probably already familiar with but instead of typically like if you're in a minor instead of making a your tonal center just make it the e that's where you get all these new tonalities and creepy stuff coming from A really good example of this would be uh, the song Double Talk and Jive by Guns N' Roses. If you listen to the ending of that particular song, it's an F major chord. So, it's going back, back and forth between those chords, but he's using A minor scale patterns. But neither of those two chords is an A minor chord. It's an F chord and an E chord, no A chord. So essentially, he's playing the Phrygian mode or the Phrygian dominant mode because he's playing within the A minor scale patterns or the A harmonic minor scale patterns. But the underlying rhythm, the tonality is the E. Okay, so you see how this is working here? So that's a good song example to uh, listen to. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about in this lesson is if you wanted to write a song or if you wanted to write a melody or if you wanted to make a bass line in the Phrygian mode, you would just simply take your Phrygian mode notes and then make sure that your tonal center is where it's supposed to be. So the song that I, that I uploaded to YouTube last week, I called it Phrygian Aliens. I called it an EDM song. It's not really an EDM song, so I know that may have turned some people off when they saw that. I just wrote a song in the computer using sounds and bass lines and stuff like that and I called it Phrygian Aliens because it's written in the Phrygian mode. It's actually in the A Phrygian mode. I know this whole lesson so far is we've been talking about the E Phrygian mode. That song's in the A Phrygian mode. So if you wanted to look at the notes that are contained within that song, it's 100% A Phrygian. Um, you can just kind of look at your A Phrygian scale pattern starting down here. Here's your fifth fret, your note A. So here's your A Phrygian mode scale pattern. Okay, so those are the seven notes. Those seven notes are found all up and down the guitar, all different octaves. The important thing is it's those seven notes, but A is the tonal center. So, And the bass line that I used, 100% using those notes. It's got that predominant A uh, note going on the bass line the whole, ta the, the whole time throughout the song. And then any other notes used to create any other melodies, any other lead lines, any types of arpeggios, all using just those notes. But it keeps coming back to that A because that's your tonal center. So uh, that's going to do it for this lesson. If you want to check out my song, take a look at it. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to write one in Lydian and uh, I'm going to add some guitar parts in there as well. And I might even do one for all, all of the seven modes. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, check it out and let me know what you think. But uh, that's going to do it for this lesson. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.